You notice this room doesn't have windows? This is a true, <laughs> this is a true geek paradise. Yeah. All right. I feel like I'm in a basement. I'm right at home. <laughs> So your first step, if you're going to mail, mail us your drive, is to go to the website and do our mail-in form. Just submit the mail-in form. Um, and that, that just comes to us electronically. And after submitting the mail-in form, you'll see our packing and shipping instructions. And the most important thing to do at, at, at this time is to make sure that you use a lot of bubble wrap when you pack your drive. Any concern about electrostatic discharge and the handling of the drive or the packing of the drive? No, not not really. We've never had any problem with that. If you have a anti-static bag, definitely put it in there. Um, but bubble wrap seems to have the same kind of properties. Go um, in a Ziploc bag. Ziploc bag's fine, cool. but it, it's not really required. Okay. Um, if you want to be as safe as possible, you can even use the original box and everything that your drive came in. So um, but we just recommend at least two to three inches of bubble wrap on all sides. Never use styrofoam peanuts and always ship in a box. Some okay. people send us a, a drive in an envelope. An envelope. And, then <laughs> and that's it. it. Damaged even worse. Yes, yes. Wow, I can't believe if it's that important, you, you... It's crazy, yeah. It never occurs to the customer. They need another drive to put the data on. Right, of course. So do they provide that to you, or do you provide that to them on an additional fee, or is that included, or how does that work? Um, it, they can do either. They can either supply us with their own transfer drive. Um, there's a couple requirements that it has to meet in order for us to be able to use it. Um, for example, it has to be the same size or bigger than the bad hard drive to make sure we have enough room to move the data to. Um, it can't be a NAS drive because moving over the network slows our process down too much. A um, couple of things like that. And then they also have the option to buy one from us if they want. Um, if the recovery is successful, they'll buy one from us. They can choose to just buy the smallest one that will fit all their data, or they can have any drive from 500 gigs up to 5 terabytes. Okay, so I've got a bad drive. Yep. I, I filled in the form. I boxed it up. Yep. You get it. Yeah. For some reason, whatever, you can't recover this drive. Okay. Is the drive unrecoverable? In certain cases, drives are unrecoverable by anyone. Um, we estimate it's about 10 to 15% of all drives we get and are unrecoverable by anyone. So if you ever hear a data recovery company say that their success rate is 99%, it's just, it's just the biggest lie that there is. Um, it's never 99%. It's impossible because a lot of drives have platter damage. They were dropped, the heads fell on the platters, scratched the platters. And, and, and in a lot of cases, you can't recover from a scratched platter, um, especially if the scratch is in the firmware area of the hard drive. Um, that may contain unique- That's a game over situation. It could be, yeah, it definitely okay. could be. So let's say I send you the drive, it's not recoverable. What's my cost for you to make that determination? If we couldn't recover any of your data, then there's absolutely no charge. Um, so if, you, I, if you're a mail-in, shipping back is the only charge. When I send you the drive, am I prepaying anything at that point for the service you're going to do? Um, there's no prepayment except for deleted file and format recoveries. So for deleted and format recoveries, we charge up front. And the reason we do this is because we already know we're going to follow our same process of cloning the drive, scanning the drive, recovering all the data, but we can't know for sure if we're gonna get back your deleted file. Um, but we feel like we've already done all the work and we've recovered everything possible from the drive. So you're getting back everything that can be recovered and that's why our rate is, is due up front in those cases. If we recover, say it's not a format or deleted files recovery. It's just a normal drive, it was dropped, it's clicking, or for some reason it doesn't mount. And if we recover 99.9 to 100% of the sectors on the drive, then our, our fee is due. But if we recover less than that, then we give our customers the option, you can either pay our full rate for the data we were able to recover, or a $100 labor fee if you don't want the data we could recover. Because a lot of times, it, you know, it may be days or weeks of trying to recover as much as we can. You don't even know what you're going to get back. We don't know. And, and say, let's say it's 98% of the data, but coincidentally not the one file the customer needs. Murphy's We've still worked for so long, 
we're getting a hundred dollars. But that's fair. I think yeah. that's very fair. I think so. Yeah. You keep the customer in the loop the entire way. There's not this mystery like a week goes by. Well, I don't know, but but where there's an extended period of time where I have to call and go, what's the status of my drive? Like you guys will say, for example, we received your drive. You'll get an email. Yep. As soon as it comes in the mail. So what we are get the alerts that the customer gets? Yeah. So the the drive arrives. We're sending an email. Or going over our terms and conditions, uh, confirming the total costs, and getting our customers' agreement that they want to pay that cost. That wasn't done beforehand, before the drive was shipped in? Well, in some cases it wasn't, but okay. either way, we're, we're just making it clear so they know exactly how much it'll cost. Okay. Um, you know, we have a, a rate calculator on our website, so we always encourage customers to use that first. They can determine the cost that it will take Let's to recover. Work. We want no surprises, we have no hidden fees, we so, try to be as transparent as possible. Okay, so that's the first email that goes out. Yeah. What's the next? All right, so uh, they'll, they'll respond and say that they approve our terms, then we'll move the drive into what we call on deck. Um, that's kind of like the diagnostic phase. So well, after we're done diagno diagnosing on the PC3000, and we've got the drive up and running again so that it's able to be cloned, then we send them an uh, email saying that your drive is now in progress and basically we've, we've started and it's looking hopeful. Okay. Um, almost m the majority of drives that get in progress are gonna be successful in the end. Um, now, if we took it to the PC3000, it turns out we can't recover the data for whatever reason. Um, our customer will get an email detailing what we've determined the problem to be. And um, in certain cases, there's drives um, that we, that it's, it's, it's not feasible for us to recover because the donor parts are too expensive. So like uh, any modern three terabyte Seagate drive, um, the DM series especially, these drives have uh, notoriously bad heads. There's actually a recall and a lawsuit against Seagate for these drives. Just just trying to find compatible donor heads um, can be like more than a thousand dollars. Just to find a compatible donor model hard drive could be 300. So we're supply and demand. Yeah, it's a, it's supply and demand. So that and also affects, I imagine, drives that are really old and it may be very difficult to find if it was a smaller manufacturer. Um, it's actually the newer ones that are so usually the most expensive um, because there's less donors around. Um, any 10-year-old drive, you can usually find on eBay, unless it's really go, rare. You can't just go buy another new 3-terabyte Seagate drive because it's been, whatever the issue was, they resolved it. And or you could buy it, but um, the, the specs that you have to match when finding compatible heads a lot of research. To move? Yeah, it's okay. a lot of research and even if you find, even if you match the labels on the hard drives I, to be identical except for the serial number. So let's say they're even made on the same exact date in the same factory and everything's the same, the heads that the drives use could be different. So they could have a even different the same pattern. Factory on the same day. It's different fact, yeah, same factory, same day, it could be different heads. So that's why, wow. like, uh, what you know, and we don't do these head swaps because of this, but we've looked into it and we've we've tried to before to see if it was worth it. And it was is just too many variables as far as trying to just match the donors. And then a lot of times well, you find a match and then there's platter damage and you can't recover it anyhow. That might explain the prices what some of these other companies charge. It does. That so data. that's why um, you know sometimes a fifteen hundred dollar quote isn't. Unreasonable. Isn't unreasonable, right? But, but the problem but is they charge fifteen hundred for those ten-year-old drives that you get donors for twenty dollars. Higher profit for them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I send you the drive. You can't fix it. Uh, I have the option then of saying just destroy it, get rid of it for me, or yeah, you have three options at that point. Uh, if we can't recover it, we can either send it back to you. We can recycle it for you. Um, and in certain cases, when we recycle the drive, we may offer between ten and twenty dollars for the drive. Um, if it has like a rare PCB that we may want to Use keep as a donor. donor, yeah. And then the third option is we can offer to send it to another data recovery company that we work with, who does um, the more expensive head swaps that we can't do because of our rate. If they say, look, 
send the drive back. I'll send it to somewhere else myself. They can do that. Yeah. Or they can come to you for advice as far as to, to escalate it to the next level. Yes, to go with the company that we recommend. Um, just because there's a lot of shady data recovery companies out there. Is there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, let's, let's look at the 85% of the case yep. where somebody sends you the drive and you can recover it. So they've got the email, you receive the drive, they've got the email, it's in process or in progress. What's the next email? All right, so that in progress email is once we started the cloning. So the next email will be after the cloning stage is finished. Uh, we'll let them know exactly what percentage of sectors we were able to recover. Does that mean anything to the customer? Uh, yeah, um, we kind of explain it. Okay. So I you know, so that they know a sector is kind of like, like the hard drive is made up of sectors. And so if we recovered 100% of the sectors, we recovered all the data on the hard drive. Right. Um, it's, it's hard sometimes so to explain does, the does difference the between a sector a and a file. Files? Well, not yet, not yet. Okay. So th now we're just sending an email saying we were, c we were able to basically image 100% or 99.9% or 75% let's say the drive had four heads, but one of the heads was bad. So we disabled that in, uh, on the PC3000 and so that we're still able to recover 75%. Um, and then we say, you know, do you want 75% for 300 or do you want to cancel and pay our $100 labor fee? Isn't the data spread equally among the platters? If a head is bad, let's say your drive has four heads and it has one bad head, you rip it's like ripping the fourth page, every fourth page, every fourth page out of the book, and your sentences are files. So there are sentences that will run over to that ripped out page. Those files, those sentences will be bad, but the majority of them, especially if they're small sentences, will be recovered. Small files like pictures, music, um, it's less likely to be um, spanned onto onto multiple platters. And if it's a large file, like a, like a PST file, that's 15 gigs, then it's definitely on, multi on, on that bad platter and, and that file probably won't work. Now the customer has an email at that point with a list of files. That I guess no, a no not, not yet. So let's say that we just sent them the best case scenario, which is we have great news. We just recovered 100% of the sectors on your drive. Um, now we're gonna, scan our clone using data recovery software and see what files we can recover. Um, in, in almost all cases, if we recover 100% of the sectors, we'll get back 100% of the files. Um, but a lot of times we'll do a couple different scans using different software um, and then get them back the most amount of data. Then we'll create a file listing after we move that data to their transfer drive. So they're getting a listing of exactly what's on the drive they're gonna get back. So you've already done the work. Yeah, all the work's been done at this point, yes. So, so is the customer then committed to pay at that point? Uh, if we've recovered 100%, they're committed to pay. Okay, well there'd be no reason for them not to if it's 100%. Exactly, in, in theory, <laughs> although it happens. Of course. Of course. Um, and if it was less than 99%, um, they're gonna decide if the files that they see are, are worth our cost or not. Uh, in some cases, we can't differentiate between good and bad files on a file listing um, because it, for whatever reason, it's impossible for us to know. That's more rare. Um, more commonly, what we'll do is we'll be able to separate the bad files or the possibly bad files from the good files and put all those bad files in a separate um, folder so the customer knows these files contain bad sectors. So you might pull up half a picture. Exactly. Say, well, like JPEGs, they're very compressed. So if, if a JPEG has just one bad sector, half the image could be gone. Um, if you have a movie, like a, let's say a DVD rip, and it has 20 bad sectors, it could still play flawlessly and you'd never even know. Wow. So it depends on you know how compressed the, the file is, what kind of data, yeah, exactly. Same with like a Word document. You, you get 75% of the document, theoretically. Maybe. No, yeah. I don't think it works like that on Word documents. Text, <laughs> At least text, I've never seen it. Text file? Text file for sure, yeah, okay. because text file, you know, the, what you see on the text file is what's actually on the sectors. Okay. Yeah. 
All right. After that, yeah, they've agreed. So they're going to pay. Then they get an email saying, "Okay, your drive's been shipped back out to you." That's right. Yeah. Well, so um, they get the file listing. They will either approve it or deny it. Based on that, we'll send them a PayPal money request. They'll pay that, Do or they have to pay by PayPal. No, they can also pay um, by credit card over the phone, or they can pay using Bitcoin. Can they send you a check? Uh, we don't accept checks anymore. Any order? Um, check? We, we don't like cash? to. <laughs> you, yeah, we definitely like cash, but right. not through the mail. So credit cards, <laughs> you mentioned Bitcoin. Bitcoin, yeah, we accept Bitcoin. You get a lot of that? We don't get many Bitcoin <laughs> purchasers. Cool it, I think it's really cool. It's a, it's a neat currency, and um, it's fun to be able to offer it and, and give it to people if they want that as an option. So, uh, so they get the drive. So, so they're going to get an email. The drive went out after they they make their payment. Yep. Then Is they the, yeah. when we get to payment, you mentioned three hundred, four hundred, five hundred. Right. What? When does somebody pay three hundred, and when do they pay the other amounts? Okay. Right. And, and just remember, it, all of our customers know the total cost before we start anything. So if if they ever determine, you know, before we started, like. If they thought it was going to be 300 and it turned out to be 500, then they can decline the recovery. There's no cost or anything. Does that happen? It, it, it's rare, okay. um, especially now. You know, we always try to get our customers to confirm the cost using our rate calculator online before they do anything. Um, You're saying rate calculator. Rate calculator. Not raid calculator. Correct. Because although you, you can could calculate, calculate the rate of your raid. You could. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So all of our prices are predetermined, um, fixed based on the model hard drive you have, okay. and if your drive has encryption. But just just basically, uh, forgetting all the encryption stuff, not to get too complicated. Yeah. When is it a three hundred dollar repair? When is it a four hundred? When is it a five hundred or six hundred? Oh, so three hundred is our base rate. If your drive is two terabytes or smaller, it will probably be three hundred. Um, if you have a drive that's larger than two terabytes, then we have a $100 fee for that. Does it matter if it's a two and a half inch or a three and a half inch drive? Does not matter. Does it matter if it's a mechanical drive versus a solid state drive? No. Does it matter if it's a flash drive versus a hard drive? No. Does it matter if it's a memory card versus, um, that's all I got. Uh a floppy disk? No, floppy it doesn't, disk. doesn't matter. Good one. doesn't matter. All right. Yeah. Could you do floppy disk recovery? We can, uh, but you know, there's not too much you can do. So there's a $100 fee if your drive's over two terabytes. Okay. There's a $100 fee if your drive is encrypted. That means if you installed BitLocker or TrueCrypt um, or SafeBoot, or if you have a Western Digital drive with Smartware. Now that's a lot of a lot of confusion are in our rate comes from Western Digital Smartware How drives. How would you know if you had a drive with with uh, Smartware? With Smartware, you know if you had a Western Digital drive, but Smartware. Well, um, all drives with Smartware, when when they're mounted, it sh it says in the folder structure Smartware Utilities or something like that. It mentions it somewhere in the drive when it's so brand it's new. Something you physically see on the drive. Correct. Okay. Uh, well. You know, sometimes there's that little smartware thing in the in your system tray, like this one. <laughs> I've never used. You never seen that? Whenever okay. I buy a drive and it comes with it, I erase all that stuff. You can't erase smartware. Oh, you can't erase it. Well, you you could erase the it. software. Right. Okay. But smartware, this is what a lot of people don't understand. Western Digital in, um, encrypts their drives out of the factory. Any drive with smartware, and that's almost all external Western Digital drives that aren't element the element line so the element line of the two and a half inch drives no there's three and a half inch elements too they're just the cheapest of, of all of them okay um not quality wise price wise the least expensive yeah and they're the ones that we would recommend because they don't have this encryption <laughs> what about seagate's equivalent the Se seagate doesn't no other company uses um has encrypted drives like this. Do you find one manufacturer is more reliable than another? Well, there's certain models that are less reliable. And you know, like the Backblaze data, the drive test. Yeah, do I mean. You, do you agree with their findings? You can't, how can you disagree with it? Because my personal experience is exactly the opposite. Uh, well, I agree with them. But I'm not using as many <laughs> drives. Yeah. I'm using more than the average consumer, yeah. but I'm not using 10,000 or 40,000 or whatever it is. Right, I, I definitely agree with them. Um, 
I'll have but, a link to that in the in the video notes, by the way, the duck. Every yeah, year. it's a good one. It's a good good read. The bigger the drive, the more likely it is to fail. Especially is on that those true? Yeah, especially on those two and a half inch ones. And and these bigger ones, you know, they're just making the platters more dense. Are you saying that a five hundred gig drive statistically will last longer than a one terabyte drive? Yes. That's interesting. Yeah, because there's less less sectors that can so go yeah, bad. There's, but but there's more, more data to be lost, but I don't understand how that makes it more likely to go bad. Well, the difference between 500 and 1 terabyte may not be that important because Two terabyte. it could be the exact same drive with more heads in it. Right. You see what I'm saying? Or more platters. Yeah, and, but they could be the exact same platters. But what happens is when drives get to be 3 terabyte, 4 terabyte, 5 terabyte, and the more dense the data is stored on there, you know, the, the smaller they're writing it in there, it's just the more likely it's going to go bad because there's less wiggle room for errors. Do you have a rush service? We do have a priority service. Um, usually the turnaround time on that is one to two days. Versus but it, what's the regular turnaround? Versus around four to six. Four um, to six days? Yep. Yeah. Plus the time for the mail if it's being there? Correct. Okay. Which is about two to three days because we use USPS priority mail. With the priority service, it's a $50 upfront fee that gets you pushed into the front of the line above every, uh, in front of everyone else. So we started immediately. Just like at the club. That's right. It's a VIP service. Um, and then if we're able to successfully recover your data, it's our normal fee plus an extra $150 fee. So if your drive was 300, it's 500 with priority. When I started doing data recovery, which was you know, seven, eight years ago. Uh, and, and my customers only had the option of paying 15 to 2,500 for data recovery. And, and, I, and waiting two weeks. Yeah, yeah, that's for the slow yeah, service. No. That's for the slowest possible service. Um, I, I was saying to myself, if I can recover their drive, like what, what do I want? What would be like fair for me? And I thought if I could make, would be hey, yeah, I thought, hey, if I can make $300 a day, I'm set for life. And that's, that's why I came to 300 I think you're doing a little more than that. <laughs> a little bit now. I hope so. <laughs> of course, if there's any questions people have, they can reach out to you through your website. Yeah, and that's, phone. yeah, $300dataRecovery.com. Or, or you can email me directly, brian at $300dataRecovery.com. Um, we also have uh, live chat on our website, which either me or one of uh, our customer service reps will handle um, anytime during business hours. And you can give us a call at 323-230-0622.